Hey, it's Tyler, host of the Tyler Knows Everything podcast, where the nose is crossed out because I always want to learn more. As always, I'll go ahead and get the advertisements out of the way so there's no interruption in the content. I picked up a new patron on Patreon this month. I want to welcome my good friend, Joel Gilbreth. Joel is an enthusiast in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and he gets to work with robots for his career, so that's pretty cool. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast. You too can support this podcast on Patreon for as little as $5. Just go to www.patreon.com slash Tyler Knows Everything. That's www.patreon.com slash Tyler Knows Everything. My other patrons are my good friend Mark McKee and the Honorable Judge Mitch Templeton. And that, of course, is a political ad paid for by the Mitch Templeton campaign. We're also sponsored by Tycoon Drain for the studio rental costs and Roxanne and Eric Helberg for the HD camcorders. My guest today comes from Texas Coffee Company, which encompasses the two brands, Seaport Coffee and TexJoy Seasoning. Please welcome the super interesting and highly intelligent Toby Castro. Tyler knows everything. And so I, I'm always fascinated by these businesses that began, you know, in the 19, early 1900s, the 1920s that are still around today mm -hmm. and have evolved into being able to keep up with, you know, the digital age yeah. and they're yeah. still around. Yeah. So maybe walk me through Texas Coffee Company and first tell me about all the different brands that that encompasses. OK, you know, uh, of course, our main brands are, are TexJoy and Seasonings and Spices. Uh, the original brand, the Seaport Coffee, that's why we're called Texas Coffee Company. Yeah. And uh, also we do um, the saltgrass products. Uh, right. Uh, anyway. And, um, and that may, the saltgrass tie-in may take us back to the original owners, right? Yeah, and kind of in a stretch. Kind, yeah. kind of in a stretch. Um, there were, you know, uh, there were original owners. They were actually, uh, this company started in 1921. And um, there were uh, originally three men who, uh, one man started a company, two men came in later, uh, Mr. Fertitta, mm -hmm. and Mr. Serial, Mr. Macia. And, um, so would that be the same family line as Tillman Fertitta? Uh, yes, that's their cousins. Yeah. To, to, and so uh, Tillman Fertitta, he's one of the owners of the Saltgrass. Right, brand. right. Yeah. And, and we, but we actually had this uh, way before he took over Saltgrass. Oh, really? And uh, yes, and, uh, uh, you know, of course he, he gets a little piece of the attic. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They call him the billion dollar buyer. <laughs> yeah. You know. Anyway, but uh, but no. Um, anyway, so, but they started off, um, uh, you know, first obviously in the coffee business, and it was actually they started off in a little uh, building over in, on uh, Magnolia that was torn down years ago. It was behind. There was a grocery store, um, Crescent Market, little family mm -hmm. grocery store owned by um, I forgot the gentleman. It was also a Fertitta, but anyway. <clears throat> um, so they started there, and there's a little shack, and we have a picture of the shack at the plant. Yeah. You know, um, it might be interesting to bring some of these pictures. They have a great collection of pictures at mm -hmm. the plant. I mean, they've kept over the years. It's always amazed me. Uh, this is my 26th year out there. Yeah. Know? Wow. And uh, it's Man, I can't imagine starting a business in the 1920s. It must right. have been so different. Yeah, and, and it was like literally a little shack, and then mm -hmm. they roasted coffee back there. And uh, I, I always like this little coincidence. Um, when I was, I think when I was born or so, my dad used to, for extra money, go butcher at that same shop, you know. Oh, you know, yeah. So, yeah and, and actually, my myself and my brother now work at the coffee company. So, anyway, but anyway, but they started there, and then um, somewhere in the mid-20s or so, they moved to uh, where we're at right now, and it was an old wooden building, and then they later on built the building we have now today. So. And that's over on MLK. On MLK, right down uh, from Lamar. Yeah, right yeah. across the street from Lamar University. right. right. I read that when Mr. Fertitta initially began the business, he had an investment of $1,800 and, yeah, a, and, a, and a Ford pickup truck. Yes, that, that's yeah. all that he had. And they had the three gentlemen, uh, Joseph was telling, and Joseph, our president, is a great historian of the company. He's, he's, he, I can sit there and listen to his stories about the company. Um, he's just so detailed. But he was telling me there were the three gentlemen kind of had assignments. Um, Mr. Maceo ran the plant, Mr. Fertitta. Um, I think had like the Bowman area, you know, and then uh, 
uh, Mr. Serio mm -hmm. had the, I think, the Port Arthur area delivering. Probably, and we have again have pictures of the little, the little Model T trucks and all. I use that actually on some presentations. Yeah, you know, so it's a neat little picture. Where do you think the coffee was coming from back then? Oh, from all over the world. Wow. Yeah, and then there's a. Um, and I guess back then it's coming on ships. Yeah, uh, uh, and and um, I would imagine in those days, the great majority came from places like Brazil. Now, nowadays, there's so many people that produce coffee. Mm -hmm. um, there's a again a, a great photo. I think it was 1957, and it's taken at the docks in Bowman, which didn't look anything like what it looks like now. Yeah, and it's this old steamer or something like that delivering, and the, th the three gentlemen are all standing there. You know, it's really neat. Yeah, uh, probably looks like the Titanic or something. Yeah, yeah, and it was this, this old boat, and here here there comes in with the, they were bringing coffee in from Brazil and the big bags and everything. So, I mean, oh, goodness. And so once they received the product mm -hmm. back then, they would do all the roasting in the factory? Oh, we still do. Oh, okay. We, we do everything there. We do everything. We, you know, we roast, pack, the whole thing is still done there mm -hmm. right here in Beaumont. Yeah. Wow. So. And, and back then, you know, now we have these K-Cups. Yes. That, what, yes. What did it look like back then? Would, would people get it like a burlap sack, um, like a feed sack of coffee? Another fascinating thing. We still sell. There's a 26 ounce bag. You can only buy it <clears throat> where we, we we have two ways of delivering our product. Actually, more than that. But anyway, um, one is we call a direct delivery. You'll see our trucks running around, and they mainly go from Houston over towards the Lafayette area, up towards uh, actually up towards Shreveport area. Yeah, I've seen and, them out. out okay, on the road. and the re and those are because of the stores that require like. Um, you know, 70 or 80 of our different textural items and quite a few coffee items. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we can deliver to their warehouses because there's so many products. But okay. they, they do get certain items to the warehouse. Hope that's not confusing. There are some items they still get, like we ship to Houston to the Kroger or HEBs. Yeah, what are some of the grocery brands that carry your product? Uh, er, everyone. Um, HEB, Kroger, Market Basket. Market Basket, we've been with them since they opened, I think, mm -hmm. 50 years. Great people. Um, um, great supporters. And, um, um, we do we do business with Walmart, um, um, gosh, um, and then there's the chains, the Brookshire Brothers, Brookshire Grocery, mm -hmm. um, and and uh, that takes us up in about a four or five state area. Yeah, how far <clears throat> north does it stretch? Oh gosh, because um, it's typically a southern food. Item. No, we go um, because of mainly because of Brookshire Grocery up mm -hmm. in Tyler. Yeah, they go up in the Arkansas area. Uh, oh, ah, then North Louisiana. Then uh, Brookshire Brothers has a, a group of stores go out in the West Texas right. and areas like that. Yeah, the Brookshire Grocery Company, which is separate from Brookshire Brothers, right, right. that was my first ever W-2 job oh, as really? a 16-year-old. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, great people, good people. Yeah, yeah so. I grew up in a little bit further, Deep East Texas, uh -huh. Palestine uh, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. was one of the, yeah. the stores that I worked at. And their corporate headquarters is in Tyler, Texas, yeah, like you yeah, said. Yeah. So I started out as a, a grocery sacker. Oh, okay. And, well, you're in the business then. <laughs> yeah. So I, I figured out that uh, if you're a cashier, you don't uh, have to go outside in the summertime yeah, and yeah. you get paid a little more. Yeah. So I, I became a cashier. And you get tips. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Then I figured out if you stock the store overnight uh -huh. you get paid a little more too yeah, so yeah, when yeah. there was a holiday or a weekend because i was a high school kid yeah, yeah so anytime there was a holiday or a weekend i would do overnight stocking yeah and if it was a holiday you get another additional right. bump in pay so i worked my way up a little well bit. yeah that uh i i believe that they're cousins the brookshire brothers yeah that's right or cousins or brothers and then they split the, and kind of did their well, own well and i think the borderline is right by where y'all you're at i think yeah. there's there was but now because Brookshire Brothers Love can purchase these stores in West Texas, mm -hmm. they're either in sometimes maybe maybe in the same little towns. But, yeah, you know, and so. if you notice, <clears throat> you don't really see, and I, and I think this is still true today, an H E B and a Brookshire's in the same city. Usually, they may be a few cities apart, but not in the same yeah. city. I yeah. think, yeah. Uh, and it goes back. I think it's like a gentleman's agreement. I don't even know if it's a a written agreement. I, I, I'd never heard that, and, I, and I'm trying to flash back to looking at store list all the time and everything. I, yeah. um, uh, I know that HEB doesn't go into uh, Tyler. Right. Okay? Yeah. And uh, th and um, I interesting talking about Brookshire Grocery. I, I wish I could remember the story. There's a connection. Bruce is one of, is, uh, one of them, Bruce Brookshire. Of course, well, I had to learn that uh, working yeah, there. The man. So anyway, the, um, there is a connection between Bill Clinton and our text joint and Brookshire Grocery. Oh, what is that? I don't know. I, oh. I mean, someone oh, told me yeah. the story of how because he's from Arkansas, right? Right, yeah. right. And, and and so um, I guess that there's a Brookshire Grocery in Hope or something. I know mm -hmm. there's one in DeQueen because I've been to it. Yeah. So in Arkansas. So, but there was some kind of uh, someone told me the story. I wish that whoever told me the story would tell me again about 
uh, how he was using it when he was in the governor or his chefs were in when he was the governor of Arkansas. But um, anyway, so. Yeah. Well, I was looking at some of this information here. I was going to read a little bit. The The site on Martin Luther King Parkway, mm-hmm. which was previously named Port Arthur Road, right. is still the home of Texas Coffee Company. Its corporate offices are housed there as well as the manufacturing facilities. Manufacturing equipment has been updated, but certain nostalgia remains in the old hardwood floors mm-hmm. and exposed steel beam supports, uh, not to mention the exotic aroma of fresh roasted coffee beans. That's got to be a treat to go to work and smell. It, it, it still is after 26 years. I'll, I'll tell you a couple things about the equipment. We were the first company to do VAC pack, 1968. Yeah, so the vacuum sealed packaging. Right. We were the first ones. Keeps in, the in coffee the fresher right. longer. And then also, um, you may check me on my facts here, but, but I believe we still have a a black pepper grinding machine in the back that we use that's mm-hmm. probably been there since the 20s. I mean, wow. how, how how technical can grinding a black pepper be, right? So yeah. that machine's back there. I, I know when they're grinding, my face sweats if I go back in that back area and everything. Yeah, you know, I recently took a tour of the uh, the rice mill at oh, Doge's, yeah, 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 and yeah. you wouldn't believe how much, you know, in-depth just sorting rice is, oh. you know, they've uh, mm-hmm. and how technology has improved that right. they've, they've got a machine that take with a camera sorts the rice and and takes out particles that are you know maybe like an impurities or yeah, a, yeah. a piece of rice that's not white and they're trying wow. to separate that out yeah, yeah. That, they're 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 a great company a great local company you know mm-hmm. them and zumo you know have been around for years and years you know so yeah i really enjoy those local brands that yes. have been around for a hundred years you know well, well people are always because we get so many people here coming in with uh, construction companies and things like that, that they're, um, and I think like a while ago, you didn't realize that we still do everything here. Mm-hmm. People think that we, uh, first thing they think that we, we do um, our, our products produce somewhere else, bring them in here. But no, we do, we do the whole thing there right here in Beaumont, you know, and here. Yeah. So, um, That's really great for job creation because you've got everything from sales and marketing all the way down to manufacturing. Right. right. And then, and then we work. Uh, we work our, through a number of food brokers. We have about three food brokers represented in some of the accounts, and so all their people. So. And so, when did they get into the spices and seasoning? Um, I'm not real clear. To be honest with you, I, you know, I, I think it was somewhere in the 50s and 60s. The steak season was first thing, and I've heard different stories. Uh, I, I believe it was something that I, I, maybe Mr. Fatia they they had a um, they had like a little ranch or something, uh, mm-hmm. you know, outside of town. And um, I think he would grill out there and they, the people, all the families, got, the families were huge, you know. Yeah. And um, so they'd go out there and I think he he created the mix, okay. you know, and that was the, the steak season. Yeah. Um, it's only been in the plastic bottles right before I came out there. I think they went to the plastic. It was still glass bottles, I think, up into the... Uh, maybe the early 90s. I came in 94. 94. You know, but we, okay. we were already plastic then. So. Wow. But, um, and TextJoy kind of has this hype culture associated mm-hmm. with it for people that live in the north that can't get it at the local stores. Yeah. And so they're getting people down here. Uh, or shipping. Yeah, you ship it from your website. Yeah. And then they have friends down here. They always say, go get me that yeah. TextJoy. But they probably don't realize that they could go to your website and order it. Yeah, they can do that. And it's, uh, you know what it's like... Um, they're fanatic about seaport coffee mm-hmm. and the texture. I mean, we, you know, when people have problems getting it from us, be, you know, whatever. I mean, they're they don't play games with this. They're you know, yeah. I mean, they're <clears throat> you can understand. There's there's second, third generations drinking this, right? And and I'll, I'll tell you what we've we're starting to see now. Our coffee is is pure coffee. Mm-hmm. If I were to open this package, and, and pour my coffee, it would be nothing but coffee. Okay. Other coffees, I'll mention names. You can see little white specks. That that's oh. that's the I guess the hull. They can probably if we could do it, we'd throw it in there for weight and it, it'd reduce our so cost. So kind of like fillers. Exactly, is what it is. Yeah. And our coffee is pure coffee. And I think what's maybe happening. I, I I don't know if I'll be around to see it. I'll probably be out the pasture by then. But I think that um, a lot of the young people who were go, uh, going to the the Starbucks Sunday get, getting actually uh, that's pretty you know strong coffee or mm-hmm. whatever but i believe they may have started developing a, a palate for good coffee again right because we're watching the younger people you, you know the founder's choice is our mildest blend this is what you would find in a restaurant you know? okay and then the dark roasts are, are people sometimes refer to a french roast and let me clarify something from the very beginning people always ask do you put chicory in there it does not have chicory what is that it's just another um oh a filler like, like yeah so anyway but it's oh, uh, okay. but anyway no it doesn't have chicory 
So anyway, but we're noticing young people, and, and especially like in markets in, in like in Houston, mm-hmm. you'll only find like the Founders Choice and the dark in the stores that we're in over there. And we're watching the dark increase sales. Oh, yeah. And it's not from people my age. It's just, it's just the younger people. So they, they may have a, a developed palette now where, they, where you have a lot of the bland stuff. Yeah. And, and now they're, they're maturing. And just like anything, you go from candy to um, steaks. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a trend among young people right yeah, now yeah. because we're getting away from some of the traditional uh, beer and wine, and they're right. liking the craft beer exactly. and the, exactly. the high-end whiskey and bourbons, exactly. scotch. Yeah. 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 And typically you think young people are just getting the, you know, the Bud Light or the Miller yeah. Light. Yeah. Uh, so same thing with coffee. I've seen young people that are getting rid of their cure eggs and they're uh-huh. getting a pour over. There you go. They're getting a French press, yeah. you know, cause it's trendy and yeah. organic and natural yeah. is kind of trending as well. So they're looking for things that are pure and have it, you know, just one ingredient, just coffee. Yeah. They yeah. don't want yeah. something with yeah. a bunch of other ingredients. That's the real deal, babe. Anyway, yeah. and, 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 and you know, it's, um, I've had this happen to me, especially in Houston where, um, you know, I'll see a, young person picking up my seaport and, and you know, I'll say something, introduce myself or whatever. And um, then the first thing is say, where is it? You know, in fact, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I'll go in Bowman, Texas. They go, Bowman? You know, I, mm-hmm. I grew up in Groves or in Needland and I didn't know, you know, I just, I'm surprised, but uh, you know, their people are, are, are really surprised that coffee's coming from right here. Down yeah. Here and everything. So anyway, but yeah, we, we, we're starting to see that trend and it's, it's a so, slow trend, but you know, as, as people start switching over, you know, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, we're really excited about that. And then the K-Cups have been fantastic for us. The, 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 you know, it's, um, um, I, I, you know, as being a sales manager, I, I didn't believe that it would sell as quick as it did and, mm-hmm. and, and it's growing quick as it is, you know. Yeah. And so we're real together. But I mentioned to you earlier, we still have, if you go anywhere, like I said, where we have direct delivery, by that I mean like basically the Golden Triangle, Southwest Louisiana, mm-hmm. a little bit in Houston, you'll still see these 26 ounce bags of coffee and that is the best coffee you smell it through the bag and everything uh, the reason yeah. we can't put it in a warehouse because it doesn't have much of a shelf life okay because it's bags i mean it's hand-packed bags and um right. they're, and uh and we still believe it or not we blow it out in north louisiana or i say north louisiana like lake Shore. yeah there's still a lot of people that still have grown up with that old bag like that oh, and so wow. um i used to get it and put it in my freezer and keep it mm, you know that's so, a good yeah, idea so anyway yeah I bet it looks good as decoration too. Yeah, it's a neat little bag. It's a really, I mean, it's got the old, um, the old ship on there. And I mean, it's yeah. the original bag. I mean, and so. Well, I can definitely taste the difference <clears throat> because uh, I didn't really start drinking coffee until I was around thirty-five. Wow. I, and wow. and I, I don't typically drink it in the morning. I usually drink it later in the day. Yeah. But I would get to where some coffee I kind of got used to and I didn't mm-hmm. feel it anymore. Yeah. And I would it, usually some of the discount brands and the K yeah. cup. And I'm like, I think this coffee is fake. <laughs> <laughs> because I would drink a cup and then I'm yawning. Yeah. But I, I recently tried Seaport. It's just been kind of a recent thing. Yeah. And I could definitely taste yeah. taste the difference and feel a difference. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know what? It's like um, people, I think, would be surprised how much coffee I drink. I don't drink that much coffee myself. Because, I, you know, I fix me a cup like Seaport. Uh, I like between roasts. Now, that uh, for just, uh, just uh, anyway, I... Um, and people ask, what's between, was it between? I always go, it's between, right? Somewhere they named it between. I think because at one time. Medium, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, ours are, it's medium between dark. Yeah. And so I, but anyway. How um, do you typically take it? Just. Just plain black. Plain, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, and, and it's got, and it's like a, for me, it's like a little glass of wine. I mean, I'll just sip at it. Yeah. In the morning, you know, I get up and fix my wife and I a cup of coffee. And, so you know, I let mine cool down a little bit or uh-huh. I put a few ice cubes oh, in really? it. And then I chug it. <laughs> Because I don't, I'm not enjoying it. Yeah, I just yeah. kind of want the effects of it. Yeah. Well, you need to try our dark, man. You'll come up here hyper, man, like yeah. a speed freak or something. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so and no, it, it's I, not. You I know, got, um, I got to tell you this too. Uh, people think the coffee that's darker has more caffeine. That's not true. It's the opposite. Oh, okay. It's the opposite. So anyway, it's just the bolder flavor. Yes, yes, and, oh, and richer flavor that. and all. You know. So anyway, and our all our coffee is 100 percent arabica bean. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I. Uh, I can't tell me packages I've opened up in stores. Uh, I, I love to get customers, you know. Of course, i got to do some quick explaining to manage why I'm over there with a box opener opening a package of his coffees. You mm-hmm. know? But um, to show them that difference, you know, just, just look at the coffee mm-hmm. and you make a decision, you know. And, and um, Is Arabica referring to a location? No, no, it's a type of bean. A type of bean, type okay. Of bean, right. 
And nowadays, like I said, so many countries do uh, a, a coffee, and good coffees, mm-hmm. good coffees. You know, um, um, in my opinion, you know, it's like um, people talk about, oh, it's Colombia, it's Colombia. Yeah, I guess it's the climate, maybe nah, closer to the nah, equator. Nah, nah. Yeah, I'm telling Is you, it, you know, that there's, if I name some companies, uh, companies that, countries that are putting out some coffees, it would be shocked, some good coffees, you know, so. Yeah. Anyway, but, um, but yeah, it, you know, uh, God bless the young people. They're, they're, I think they're, um. They're going for quality again, which is great for us. Yeah. So going back to this says, while each brand is 100% <clears throat> Arabica pure coffee, mm-hmm. Seaport and Tex Joy coffee are made from a blend of quality beans imported from coffee growing countries around the world. Seaport is available in five different roasts, dark, between dark, like you said, mm-hmm. medium roast and founder's choice. Right. Oh, dark, dark and medium roast, yeah. medium roast by itself, and then Founder's Choice and decaf. Yes. Yeah, which yeah. I don't, I, I'll never understand decaffeinated coffee, but to each their <laughs> own, I guess, right? <laughs> it's um, like, like a kind of, let me have a cup of coffee, no, no coffee in Yeah, uh, <laughs> Seaport's dark roast is the hardiest roast in our line, referring to the richest aroma and flavor available on the market today. Right. Between roast combines the rich aroma and flavor that is desired by many coffee drinkers. Yeah. And then medium roast gives you the milder flavor without sacrificing the quality and taste that is synonymous with the heritage and tradition of seaport coffee. And, and, and you know, uh, there's a, a story after story um, about people, about, about the, the, the coffee. Um, so many people that went to Lamar, it, you know, like all over the world. I'll, I'll run into someone somewhere in there, Dallas or something. I mean, when they sell. Oh, I'd go to Lamar and I would come out of my class and I could smell that coffee. Oh, they could smell yeah. Because you know, across they, the street, you yes, can smell yes. it. From the and I, I got to tell you, that's some pretty good smelling because right behind us is Exxon. Yeah, that's so, true. So we're we're competing with their smell and ours. So, mm-hmm. so our coffee smell apparently was stronger than the uh, Exxon smell. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, people tell me that all the time, and I do remember, remember during my. Um, Probably run, don't need an air more. freshener or a candle. No, nah, I'm mean, smelling that. It yeah. smells great and everything. Yeah, so it says production begins shortly after the beans arrive in the warehouse as they are sifted, separated, and thoroughly cleaned to rem- remove foreign matter. Right. They are then custom roasted to perfection using different temperatures and lengths of exposure to produce the various roasts. After roasting, the beans are cooled, ground, and packed for the freshest taste. In fact, many people who became accustomed to the rich taste and then moved away are telling you guys that they can't find the same quality and freshness in any other coffee and ask to be shipped their favorite blends. Which is, by the way, that's a great growing uh, thing for us right now, the internet. Yeah, which is a great idea for the the gift baskets too because it's always hard to buy for someone, and especially if they live out of town, (laughs) this is definitely something that they're going to look forward to, Mm -hmm. to getting. You know, if you're stuff, anything from the South, like, New Orleans style food. You, right. you hear people shipping the king cakes. Yes, yes. All over the the yes. place. It's just something that you can't find in those particular regions. Well, the, the, the steak seasoning, of course, uh, it's the steak seasoning is an all purpose seasoning. You know, and we actually tried that for a while. We we came out and put a label on there, and we called it uh, steak seasoning. I don't know, or no, all purpose texture. Well, people, well, I wanted the steak seasoning. The steak season, people use it on fish, and we have stories constantly sent to us. Oh, I I use it on apples. You know, I put it on the apples. Oh, yeah. And, um, but, uh, I think I put it on scrambled eggs. Before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, um, anyway, and, um, my son and I, uh, back in 2000, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Philmont, the scout, uh, trek up in, uh, New Mexico. It's like oh, no. a 14 day hike, 15 day, whatever, up in the mountains. Um, anyway, and so obviously you're carrying these backpacks the whole time, you know, and very limited on your, uh, food. You have these, uh, REMs, you know. Uh, that you which pretty good, pretty bland after the second day. Mm-hmm. Well, <clears throat> we had um, we had these little packets we have done for promotions at times. Not, it's not all the times, like point oh five ounce packets of a steak season. Right, like a little tear open. Yeah, pack. man. I mean, we carried those up there, and it was like I mean, people were going crazy over that stuff. I mean, oh, they would trade yeah. Them. yeah, and so um, and they don't weigh anything, so we stuck them all over our, our, our in our pockets and stuff to yeah. throw it in to throw it in the REMs because that they those things are. Wow. Yeah, the dehydrated food. Yeah, that yeah, probably yeah. would make it. Yeah. They don't it, actually. I, I didn't think they taste that bad. It's just if you smell it for like every day, mm-hmm. you know, it ain't that beast cooking. I'm <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, but but people uh, with that with the uh, steak season have learned to use it. I mean, on everything, you know. So. 
And so do they do you think that the the owners kind of wanted to diversify a little bit? By having the coffee and then having the the seasoning, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like ones in the food yeah. market, ones in the drink market, and then I was reading there's 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 so many different ones. There's barbecue seasonings, yeah. steak seasonings, spices, extracts, right. uh, the coffee, of course, that we talked about, and then tea. Yeah, yeah, and then um, to answer your original question, I, I think the story I've heard, and like I said, this this the company, one of the beauties of this company, like I said, is you know. Um, they're probably not going to give me any more raises when I say this. I'd go out there. It's fun working out. There. I, mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's like uh, I, I told Donald for tea. I, I keep saying, you know, you ought to sell this to a reality show. I mean, yeah. Well, so, what's the company culture like? It's great. Well, you know, we have these. We have people uh, that have been out there now. Not right now. We have like uh, one of the girls who works for me who was out there before me, so she's probably been out there thirty years. And then uh, we had people who have retired who. We had a man uh, from Beaumont, uh, James Rickett, Mr. Rick, and um, he went to college a year or so and then came to work for us. So he only had one real job. He stayed out there over 50 years. Yeah, you definitely know that you have a good company culture when you have multiple decades right, of workers. Right. Uh, Mr. Serio, Boo Serio, we call him Boo. He uh, passed away a number of years ago. A wonderful man. Um, he was out there right after he came back from the war. I think he worked a little bit somewhere else, and he's probably spent 50 years with us. So anyway, and, <clears throat> you know, when you go out there, I think you'll, when you walk in there, you hear the laugh, you hear the joke. I mean, it just, uh, it, it's, it's a good culture. Um, we, um, um, and like I said, people have been out there for, for a great number of years. And I told somebody, you know, I was, <clears throat> in the company previous to this I spent 19 years with was, was a, you know, a large major company. It was like a Procter & Gamble. It was called Reckon & Coleman. Yeah. So the most of your adult life, you've worked for two companies. Uh, well, Just in this thing, I actually have worked in, I started in the sales in 1972 okay. uh, with American Tobacco, oh, <sighs> yeah. selling, selling cigarettes. <laughs> and then I spent a short time with Lipton, the tea people in Houston. Uh-huh. This, the, and then uh, I came over here. My wife and I are from Beaumont, but we met in Houston. Okay. And a company that hired me brought me over here. Um, and I spent 19 years with them. It's a great company, but it's Record and Coleman out of London. But they had everything from... Um, Oh, gosh, a French's mustard to Pam spray to black flag. And when I tell people that, one of the items they had was Santa flush. People, I don't hear people buying Santa flush anymore, toilet cleaners. I said, mm-hmm. like I tell the people that work for me, I said, this is fun stuff to sell. I mean, you, got, you have people walk in and they actually get excited about it. Oh, I love right, texture. Yeah. I mean, you, we, I don't hear people, I don't walk in the store and somebody have, complaining about something. You sure. Know? So anyway, you mentioned extracts a while ago. Yeah. Okay, so at the office yesterday, I was going to bring this to you. They inform me. They inform me <laughs> that this is ninety percent alcohol. Oh, okay, so this is <laughs> Baker's special yeah. pure lemon extract. Yeah, yeah. it's ninety percent alcohol. So uh, you know, were saying we, you could clean your hands with, and I don't, don't, I don't want people to start running and doing things and hurting themselves. But uh, so we, we said, you know, you clean your hands with that, and plus you smell good. Yeah, it's so our, our lemon, our lemon and our almond are ninety percent alcohol. Wow! So it says it adds a great lemon flavor to cake mixes, pies. Yeah. Uh, you can make a glaze for cookies, donuts, or pastries. Yeah. And but, then, but right now, with our state of the world, with our little virus situation, I thought, well, yeah, that'd be my, it, you know, in the, uh, uh, Steve Law, who was out there with us, uh, was laughing this morning. He said, you know, I'm, we're telling people, and if you put it on your hands, don't you know, your dog will probably be trying to lick your hands. Probably it's so. It's pretty sweet smelling stuff. You know? And it, it looks like some other flavors that you guys have are yeah. root beer, root beer extract. butter, yes. almond, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. vanilla, cinnamon, ginger, and yeah. maybe a few others. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. So take that and keep that around here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how, how do you think sales have evolved since being a salesperson in the 70s mm-hmm. versus being a salesperson in 2020 because I'm, I'm also in sales as well yeah so yeah. it's very fascinating for me to kind of think how you as a salesperson have learned mm-hmm. to adapt well if you're here then you've adapted mm-hmm. if you ain't here sure. you ain't here you ain't ad- and um you mentioned it earlier i think you know obviously the technology i mean out there it's just it, it, it's unbelievable um I, I can uh, don't want to go through a war stories, but um, I can actually remember the first item in the first store I saw scanned. We were told I was with American Tobacco, mm-hmm. 1972, 73, and uh, I remember we were at a meeting. They said <clears throat> they have these things on the 
on our packages now where the cashier will just run it across a light is what they told us and the price come out we're going whoa you know oh yeah then, a uh, barcode uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so anyway i mean scientific we said yeah you know and we were of course yeah so anyway because when's the last time a young person in 2020 marveled over the technology of a barcode yeah right? i mean it's just yeah. a, and, and then um so and, the you, first, and you probably didn't use a computer at your oh, desk no no no, yeah. no my wife and i were talking about the other day when i came to beaumont and uh, back to beaumont rather 1994 i'm sorry um in 1975 with Record and Coleman, mm -hmm. the first thing my new manager gave me or got, we went and got, was a hand calculator. A calculator, yeah. And I'll never forget, it was $125. Wow. And, uh, and God bless him, I'll tell you, because that company that I was working for, we sold a lot of products direct to these like Gibson, I don't know if you remember the Gibson stores. Gibson uh, they were like, uh, they were, department stores, right? right? They were like Walmarts before. Yeah. And they bought directly from our company. So, when we went in there, we may have to write an order for, uh, and that with that company, my God, they had everything from Griffin shoe polishes. I mean, it's just so I may write an order for about um, 100, 120 items, mm -hmm. and you'd have to extend it, and you'd have to write it on an invoice. You know, the product, the size, the cost, if there was allowance, mm. and then the call. Then you total up, and you'd have to total it just like in the old days. You know, right. cipher like Gomer. Yeah, I mean, always like our Google. Who's that? So he ciphered all these numbers down. So. Um, we came over here, and I made, I think, a couple of stores that went, oh, man, this is this is not going to be a fun thing. And he said, let's go get you a hand calculator. And they were about six inches big, you know, four inches. Well, that was like, man, that was fantastic. I was going to town with that thing. And now yeah. people would just about give them away, you know. Right. And then. Um, you know, imagine showing up to work in 2020, and someone says, hey, the Internet's down today. And oh, yeah. they would just go home. No, it, you know, that uh, like that portion of, for me personally, um, Obviously, I have an office at the, at the coffee plant, but uh, people laugh. They'll say, what hours do you work? I always say 24-7. The reason is I have, um, you know, like I have customers, I, I, uh, Walmart, H-E-B, you know, they're contacting me at 7 o'clock at night I, yeah. because my buyers, and I, I may have like a number of buyers with H-E-B, a number of buyers with Walmart. I mean, they're, they're merchandisers I deal with and everything. So anyway, <clears throat> um they take their, their their laptops home, so they, you know, they and and they they start talking. You know, we we're doing business, which is really kind of neat. I mean, I can go upstairs. I went upstairs last night and had a couple because of the uh, the virus situation mm -hmm. that we were uh, in discussions with a couple of companies, and I went up last night and uh, you know took a couple emails, answered them, took care of what they needed. I mean, yeah. and the information is there. I, I I can pull the information I have at the coffee plant. Right there in my computer now, so. Do you think back in the 70s and early 80s, it was more 8 to 5? Oh, and, yeah. And then you're done, right? Yeah, you go, yeah, yeah. And then. Uh, you go home, you see the wife, you eat dinner, and, yeah. and you are clocked out. No, it's 24-7. And, and, you know, here's the other thing, the cell phone. Yeah. You know. You're always it, available. Exactly. If I'm on vacation, you know, I, I, um, I don't even try to go tell because there's so many people that have that number now, right? Yeah. Okay. And so, which which is actually my personal number is my is my Right, most people don't have a house phone yeah, anymore. Yeah. So anyway, so um, you know, it's, it's, I'm not gonna sit there and go to all this thing, call everybody and say I'm. Over. Now I'll try to let a few key people know, uh, other than my company people, that I'm I'll be off this week. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but you know, no, a lot of times I'm somewhere and here comes the phone call. You know, they're mm -hmm. not they're not being rude. They just that's just the way business is nowadays. You right. Know? I get to the point where if I'm on vacation and I don't answer emails or phone calls, it's just more work when I get back. Exactly. I exactly. might as well send a quick text or yeah, a quick yeah. answer and just yeah. go ahead and solve the, the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'll take, obviously I have my iPad with me. We're traveling or something like that and I'll open it up, uh, you know, and, 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 and uh, it, you know, it, fortunately most things are pretty quick result. And then, and then another key thing is I have people that I work with that I can trust to pass because, you know, I tell people all the time, people are not calling me or texting me because they're telling me I'm doing a great job. They're calling me because there's a problem. Yeah, right. And, you know, if I have a problem, I'm calling a Steve Lyle. I'm calling a Joseph for tea. I'm calling yeah. Donald. Someone, and, and we have some, talk about the, the, uh, the culture and the people. We have people up there that they'll take care of things for you. Yeah, yeah. and you've been doing this so, so, for so long that mm -hmm. I can know confidently that you must be a great problem solver. I hope so. <laughs> like I'm saying, I ain't here because, <laughs> yeah. and and that and you know I tell people too that's 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 my job. That's what they pay me for. You know mm -hmm. I don't bring, um, you know Joseph and Don and our kid all the time. I say, I don't bring them a lot of things they pay me to take care of. If the, if if that was the case, and they they could just get rid of me and they take care of it. And my job is to solve 
what I can to to degree. Yeah. And and so much of that is, um, thank God, it's it's things that are, don't have to go to the next level. You know? So the original owners are probably. I would assume passed away. Yes, yeah, so this time. years ago. And so, years what ago. generation are you guys on? Uh, Joseph and Donald are there in the third generation. Their their grand their grandfather mm -hmm. um, started the company. There was um, uh, around town. You'll see um, the Perigi and you know uh, real estate Sam Perigi. That was uh -huh. his grand. Mr. Maceo, I'll give you two minutes there. Mr. Maceo had four daughters. Okay. Okay. Mr. Fertitta uh, had uh, some daughters and sons. But Ma Mr. Maceo's um, son-in-laws worked at the plant. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, the only one that didn't work out there was, um, uh, you, you know, Charles Giglio, Giglio Distributing? G yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. his, that was his grandfather, Mr. Maceo. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, uh, 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 Jacob Chitoris with Rayos. Okay. Yeah. That was his grandfather, Mr. Maceo. Okay. Uh, uh, Frank Messina and all those guys. You're, you're bringing up all the MVPs of Beaumont yeah, right now. Yeah, you're great yeah. guys. Great guys. And, you know, uh, the, the, the Messina boys, you know, they got like 180 boys, huh? Yeah. Great guys. Um, that, that Mr. Maceo was, was their grandfather. And um, anyway, so uh, and then the, so the second generation came in there and at different times, uh, one of those would be the president, you know, and those, uh, I, you know, I was blessed that I was able to um, actually work with some of those guys. You know, when, when you think about this, where uh, I am personally, you know, to be able to work with a guy like uh, Mr. Sirio, who you hear this guy comes back from the wars, raising his family mm -hmm. and goes to the. 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and I meet him in the 90s, you know, when he's just getting ready to leave the company and everything. Yeah, they started at the beginning of the Roaring Twenties. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just so, it, so it, it, it's, it's, um, it, 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 it's, uh, it's a wonderful little place out there, you know, yeah. and, and uh, I wish that we were able to do more tours and things, but mm -hmm. the way the plan is set up, it's not, um, <laughs> the thing was like 1926, 1920, so we're not set up really for tours. Tourism. I mean, yeah, because yeah. I mean, yeah, we have, um, uh, um, you know, uh, people had to be going upstairs where they're roasting coffee and that. I would imagine you have the health department and the USDA sure, yeah. maybe. Oh, especially yeah. now. We don't need people. We have to, um, we, we had a, uh, Joseph called a meeting Monday to, to meet with all the employees to go over um, the situation we have. But some of the, some of the things they're asking us to do now, we've been doing for years. Right. We have to, you know, uh, the cleanliness, the, you know, the sanitation and also Anyways, none of this is really new to us, and we've been doing it. Sure. So, um, yeah, my good friend uh, Frankie Randazzo from Madison. Yeah, yeah, Frankie. Um, I know Frankie. He mentioned, you know, to people that most of the restaurants that have a reputable name that, uh -huh. that always get good scores on the health department right. uh, inspection, they're probably cleaner than your kitchen at home. Yeah. And so yeah. it's okay to, we just transitioned last night into drive through only or takeout yeah. only. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, before that, a couple of days ago, people were able to dine in, and he said, "Go ahead and come. We're open. Yeah. We're we're taking all the same precautions that we have been, uh -huh. and it sounds the same thing for your company yeah, as well." Yeah, you know, it's I, I, I'm I'm really tick. I've been watching. You know, there's um, through the doom and gloom, so many, especially on Facebook, you hear people how are they adapting to this and mm -hmm. and helping each other. Um, and you know, this this drive through, I'm gl I'm glad to, um, that the restaurants can stay open so that they can. They can make a living. And yeah. I also heard um, Dan Grisham this morning tell people to go ahead and tip these people. And if they, sure. If they deliver them to you and mm -hmm. everything, I mean, that's, this is – this is. Yeah, so if you're listening to this a year from now, we're talking about the coronavirus of yes, yes. March uh, 2020. So right. we'll see how this all plays out. And hopefully by this time next year we're making jokes about it. So My yeah. goodness. Uh, I saw that Academy is out of ammunition. Oh. So. <laughs> People pe people have switched from hoarding the toilet paper uh -huh. to hoarding ammunition. Well, so things are easier. Well, uh, surely you guys have a hurricane story, I would imagine. Yeah, many hurricane stories. Or <laughs> several regret. hurricane stories. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, I believe that our experiences in southeast Texas with hurricanes has made us better for this type of situation. Right. The infrastructure. Everything. Uh, I can tell because I've lived through several of them. Yeah. And every hurricane gets better and better and quicker right. and quicker. Right. And, and, and you know, we have a, this great uh, – uh, Judge Brannick is fantastic. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, that's the key to everything is, you know, uh, around here right now. And, you know, um, but, yeah, we we, <clears throat> um, we were able to uh, – it was kind of it was kind of crazy during Harvey um, – Carlo Bishame, who passed away a number of years, a beautiful guy, um, uh, passed away right after Harvey. Um, anyway, during the Harvey, during the flooding, uh, my family and I, we had gone to Dallas. And 
I was on the phone with him off and on every day, all day long, you know. And so he, when I called him one time, he said, I said, where are you? He said, I'm at the plant. I said, what are you at the plant for? He said, this guy, and this was part of the worst, during the worst part of the flooding, was delivering a, a truckload of garlic. <laughs> and he made it through. We don't, we don't know. He came through somehow down 105 or he was coming. You know, he, is, he made it through. Wow. And so Carlo had to open the plant for him. So he went down and opened the plant and Carlo got on the forklift and he was the president of the company, got on the forklift and unloaded the guy's garlic oh, so the man. guy could get on his way. But, um, yeah, what we do right now, we, um, we do build, as we get into hurricane season, we build up on some of the key items, what we can. We're not going to sit there and put coffee to, to sit on the dock for three months, but, mm-hmm. but um, we do that. Um, and, you know, every hurricane is different. We, right. we, we prepare for what we, we can prepare for. Some were wind damage, yeah. others are flood damage. Well, right. So anyway, but uh, obviously, uh, I think the longest we've ever closed that plant was maybe just a couple of weeks at the very, very most. We were back. And that was probably a power outage, maybe. Uh, actually, yes. You know, um, now that you mentioned, really, uh, it was it was a freeze. We had, oh, I, think a freeze. In, I can, okay. think in 97, the, the power went down and we lost power out there for a while, you know, mm-hmm. so... Um, but and, and and fortunately that old building sits real high, so yeah, uh, you know we we've never got water close to anything. You know mm-hmm. it's, it's more likely water's gonna come to the roof than anything. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, yeah, we're 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 about as ready as we can. But like I said, regretfully down here we have a lot of experience. All of us do. You do. Everybody does with the hurricanes. You know. Right. And this reminds me of that. But I was laughing. You talking about the uh, people stocking bullets. My wife doesn't let me keep a, a gun around the house. Oh, All really? I have is a baseball bat. So well, don't tell everybody yeah, here. Yeah, that's all, I got a big bat. <laughs> no. Anyway, so. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll get the candy. They'll have plenty of baseball bats, right? Yeah, <laughs> so. you stay ready. Uh, it, yeah, it, this is a fascinating time, uh, I, mm-hmm. you know. But I really, uh, I'm seeing so much, so much good things out of people right now. You know, it just, you know. Sure. You yeah, know. And, and I know just from being a Texan, I think the the stock of ammunition is just for personal protection. Uh, people are more likely in this community to go lend a hand yeah. more than anything for yeah. sure, yeah. and we we've seen that through every every storm and i know we'll over, overcome this as well yeah my, my only thing is like my, my son called me yesterday we we're talking about something and um i was asking how he's doing his food stuff he lives in houston uh, mm-hmm. missouri city and uh, lives by himself and he said but um anyway we're talking, he said well I, you know i've been seeing some squirrels out here starting to look good yeah <laughs> so i said, I said my, this may be my chance it, if i had a gun to get a hold of that squirrels there, eat there, them on pecans you know you know there's so many bizarre <laughs> things so such as uh the waterway in venice uh-huh, right uh-huh. or vent yeah uh, in in Europe, so the sediment has settled because there's wow. no boat rowboats, and so it's clear. Wow! And then wow. I just saw in the news today that dolphins came into. Yeah, it. Well, I I didn't read that. So dolphins are coming up into the, the canals. I believe so. Man, that yeah, is because so. there's no traffic. I mean, yeah. when they, their shutdown is a little bit different than our shutdown. Yeah, yeah. Our shutdown is kind of optional a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, they're being tough on the dine-in restaurants, but that's about it. Like to be honest. People are still going to work. Oh yeah, here. And, and and that's and that's yeah. good. I, and I think it's. Um, and with the petrochemical industry too, they can't to. they can't shut down. No. So it, they may have a skeleton crew or some no. some key people, but you know when I'm driving in in the morning, it's still normal amount of traffic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and, and um, I'm seeing people. I, I, I said earlier, I went to the uh, uh, grocery store this morning and pick up um, vitamins. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, but um, they're they're not buying. It looks like the panic stuff, you know, and and, and yeah. so that's good in there. I think, and um, but I, like I said, I'm I'm hearing, uh, you know, there's only so much bad that can give. They can give you, you know, totals of sick, dead, whatever. But there's more good stories that people can hear. I mean, you can hear mm-hmm. one after another. Uh, Facebook is fascinating me of, of how what yeah. how, how parents are becoming creative at home. And right, uh, my wife and I were uh, just went for a little drive the other day. I can't tell you, and this is in the afternoon, right? You know, mm-hmm. six o'clock. There's how many families were outside with their kids? Yeah. I, and I, that was not, I mean, it was, it was very obvious. So I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to <clears throat> go to my usual fitness gym right. yesterday. And I've kind of t- taken back. So in the evening when I get home, thank goodness it's daylight savings time. Yeah, so okay. it gets uh, darker later. Yeah. 
So I went for a bike ride because I'm pretty isolated on a bike yeah, ride. Yeah. No, nobody is riding next to me. Uh-huh. Uh, but I did a lot of riding through the neighborhoods and families, them, you know, they're already in the house together. So now they're they're in the yard together. Right. Not so much friends coming over and stuff, but just the families. Lots of family fa- time. I did notice that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm making up art. I go to the wellness center, uh, mm-hmm. St. Christmas, and they closed. Um, I think they did close. Monday, I think uh, was, to, yeah, Tuesday, I Monday, believe. Tuesday, yeah. yeah. And um, so anyway, and, that, and so, um, but, you know, I'm out working in my yard now a lot, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and believe me, if, if, if you want to work out, come to my house and let you start trimming some <laughs> <laughs> digging. I mean, it's, uh, I, I've told my wife, you can just rolling the wheelbarrow loaded with stuff after a while. You start realizing the muscles you don't use. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking so. of that, you mentioned that you had a, was it a mother that lived to a hundred? She's a hundred years old right now. hundred years old she right now. She's a hundred in February. Wow. Yeah. And, and what was her secret to longevity? Uh, probably not taking a whole lot of things serious. She's very low key. Low stress. Low stress. You know, mm. like and she'd do this thing, you know, like uh, when we were kids, you know, like Eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning, we do something real stupid. She'd say, "Boy, when your daddy gets home, you know." So from the yeah. rest of the day, we were the most perfect children, right? And we'd be at supper, and, and we'd be all laughing about something, and, and mom say, uh, "Oh, by the way, Bob, Toby did such and such," and mm-hmm. he'd say, uh, "I go." Uh, she threw me under the truck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, she was just low key. I mean, did but, she uh, did she do anything like fitness related no. or nutrition related? If uh, you go to her house right now, you ask her to fix your breakfast. Yeah. Probably being um, bacon grease. Yeah, yeah. No, she, she laughs it, at all. It that. seems like every person, you know, they always interview people that make it to a hundred, almost yeah, always yeah. on the news, uh, because that that seems to be about the threshold now. You know, maybe. Uh, our great great grandkids, it'll be a, a normal thing to live to 120. We don't know. Yeah. But right now, a hundred that century mark is kind of like you've you're an outlier. Right. And so people always interview them, and it seems to be the same thing. You'll hear one that said they they smoke and drank. Uh-huh. You'll hear somebody that said they ate hot dogs. Yeah. Uh, it seems like genetics play the biggest well, role, I guess. You know, oh, I got to tell you that one story quick. Is that uh, in all honesty, she if you had to describe her uh, since. I can remember as a little kid. She's always been low key and calm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And she's a very religious woman. Very religious. You know, her, yeah. she, uh, when she could, she doesn't attend it now, but she, uh, her and my dad were instrumental helping open a Crystal Ray church. It's mm-hmm. a little Mexican church here in Beaumont. The priest there is 98 years old. Wow. Father Lewis. Mm-hmm. And he still comes to bring her communion. And so uh, her faith being calm and mm-hmm. believe me you know she can tell you stories she graduated um here in bowman from bowman high school in 1939 mm-hmm. and um in fact she had one of her classmates at her uh 100th birthday wow and yeah, uh, the the changes that she's seen yeah are, think about that I mean, going through a war and the but, wisdom that she yeah, has uh, how's her cognitive ability it's great you really? know she, she has she has gonna be she's a little bit on the heart of hearing i hope she's not listening to this cause, but anyway but, but <laughs> turn it up re- yeah, yeah, yeah yeah she had to repeat it yeah. But, um, you know, just sitting, you know, she's just always been very low key like that. Mm-hmm. You know, she, I'll tell you what she told me, it'll stick in my mind because it used to make me so mad. She, and she, she'd always say, Oh, Toby, don't, you know, I'd be, Oh, man, that guy didn't. And she said, Oh, don't, you know, and she would just kind of, uh, uh, you know, just made me grounded, you know, and she, now, um, she never get upset. And, uh, and then when I'd say, Oh, I've got to have this, or we were in it, she says, You're taking yourself too serious. Mm. Yeah. You know, just bring you down. So now let me tell you this real quick. Her dad, my grandfather, lived to be ninety nine. Okay. So I think the genetics definitely play a role. Yeah, but let me tell you how he checked out. He was riding a bicycle, and a car hit him. Oh. He died in so the he hospital. He could have lived longer. Yeah. yeah. It, well, I'm talking. He rode a bicycle. It wasn't like one of these little men. I mean, he he had this little thing he'd put around his legs so his um pants wouldn't get caught in the chain mm-hmm. and boy he'd just take off i mean he and he'd, he'd come to your house to visit they have um they had 11 children and uh the great majority of those lived in beaumont mm-hmm. and um some my mother and I think uh two others are still alive so her baby sister lives right behind her she's nagging yeah. and um so anyway um he'd come in and he'd pull that bicycle up and he'd jump out and come have her fix him a cup of coffee go mm-hmm. to the seaport yeah and uh and then drink his coffee and then five ten minutes later he's see you later back on the- <laughs> well hopefully 20 years from now i can have you sit across from me oh, again man, uh, yeah that'd be neat <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if i can sit up well yeah. what do you see as your vision for the future of texas coffee company oh, there's so many things you know um you know one of the things again we're blessed as a company is having 
this huge market right down the street, 80 miles away. Mm -hmm. And we haven't even near tapped the potential of that, you know. Uh, we're getting more in because of Brookshire Grocery and speaking about uh, Houston. Yes, and yeah. then and then um, to be uh, in, a, in a market that's what three hours, four hours from the San, you know, San Antonio Austin mm -hmm. corridor, the uh, Metroplex. It we can. Uh, I couldn't live long enough for us to maximize what we could do just in Texas. That's not including we can cross the border here. Right. But the numbers are unbelievable, and um, there's always a. Um, a, a, a kind of like a new market, like the Hispanic market, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, I, I hope I hope that we, um, myself, the, of course, the owners, we set this company up where, um, um, you know, there's there's so much growth. We don't even have to introduce new items, to, to, to be quite frank. I mean, yeah. because you know that steak season right there. If I it's go a, in, it's a legacy item. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I you know, um, we we can go in there and and and, and really there's. You know, we've gone and done like different OS mesquite. We, you know, the crawfish. The crawfish thing keeps growing, by the way. That's that's a huge. I forgot thing to there. bring that up, but you have a whole line huge, of yeah. crawfish. Yeah, bowl. and 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 um, and then we we do um some seasonings, you know, for for particular chains restaurants. You know, okay. Uh, but you know that crawfish business is it just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's another trendy one. People, yeah, people yeah, want yeah. their craw and. My generation, or in younger, which is I kind of refer to us as the Amazon Prime generation, <laughs> we're you know we didn't used to have avocados year round. Yeah, they were season yeah. seasonal. Yeah. Now crawfish has gotten to the point where I remember just five years ago, maybe five to seven years ago, crawfish had a season and it was yeah. January it, to maybe April or so. Yeah, back then it wasn't even January or February. Yeah. It, it was usually you know maybe early March yeah. and it yeah. ended in. May, you know, you had a real yeah. tight window. Well, you, you know, now what? it's going on so long. Believe it or not, I'm, I'm going to go back. Let's see, maybe as late as maybe seven years ago, eight years ago, we had a guy working for us in Louisiana. He was my crawfish indicator. I'd say, Harry, when should we start promoting the crawfish? Oh yeah. man, they're, they're 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 so that's who set our deal. Well, now because you got to wait for that last freeze. Yeah, and so he would say when they start and say, well, now what happens is um, with some of these changes, the major change, you know. Uh, we scheduled crawfish promotions in, I think, in August or September. Not, not to happen then. Yeah. I ha my crawfish promotions are set up with some of these chains going in as late as June and July. Yeah. And I, so I, I, I never would have dreamt that. But um, anyway, it, and it used to be like you would see the sales start going east to west. Okay. And, you know, you, um, you wouldn't see big crawfish push at the Houston stores now. You see it a little bit earlier, so no, that, that's a, that's a big deal for us, you know. So yeah, it's a very social gathering, <laughs> exactly. you know, in the backyard, exactly. yeah. and yeah. and it's a a thing that you like to show off to Northerners of how yeah. to peel it, how to yeah. eat it, yeah. and you know they say, "What are you doing all that work for a little piece of meat for?" <laughs> but it's a it's a social event. It, yeah, it, yeah. There's a, you know, you scoop it up and you eat multiple yeah. multiple pounds of it, yeah. and it and it lasts. What that's why you go outside and play the washers. Yeah. And so that's that's something that people have a lot of memories attached to crawfish boil. There, there's a I don't know if you've met uh, there's a fascinating company to me uh, a friend of mine uh, two friends um, Larry Dale and Jerry Davis have a crawfish supply company. Um, the, the name slips my mind right. They're they're over there, off MLK. You'll see these okay. big eighteen wheelers back there. Oh yeah. There's someone you need to go interview sometime. Yeah. They're, they're a business you can imagine. I, I'd like to hear their story. I've, I've asked Larry a little bit there and uh, how they did, but. Um, yeah, I'll have to do that because I'll, mean, I'll for, forever regret not being able to sit across from Joe Tatoris from Jason's oh, Deli. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I went to school and went to my first communion with Joey. You know, wow. So. Yeah. I heard him speak many times. Oh, great. Um, and, but I, I, I've only had this up and going for about a year yeah. now. So. Well, with yeah. typical Bowman, my. my uh, wife teaches kindergarten i mean kindergarten she's gonna kill me second grade okay at, at uh, st anne's and this is her second grandchild of joy that she's teaching wow you know sometimes you would go into jason's deli on a busy sunday uh -huh. and he would be bussing tables yeah, and yeah, yeah. you would walk in not knowing who he was and knowing that he's a millionaire bussing yeah. your table yeah yeah he uh started over here on college street right the original yeah, store and it was number, half of what it is now at least yeah number one and uh he, he tells a story and I, I saw it so many times of his grandfather helping him out, his daddy, you know, and they're helping him and everything. Right. And then the name Jason's Deli is one of his sons. Right, right, right. But uh, 
Yeah, the tremendous story. Yeah, fascinating um, company culture as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah but um, good people. And just I've, I've known them all my life. You know, and mm-hmm. very good people. I, there's, there's. Um, I'm glad you're doing this because there, there are these companies in Bowman, uh, Coburn's. Yeah. Another great company. That's a Bowman company. You know. Right. And um, who and, uh, you may be more familiar because I, I I got here probably in 2007. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Where did the Rayos? Uh, who started Rayos? There, there was a there was a, a man, a Mr. Rayo, that had that little bakery, but it was okay. nothing to what Jakey and them had done. I mean, Jakey right. and them taken to a whole other level. Yeah, you know, and sure. uh, with the stores, I think in Houston and places like that. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, um, they've done a tremendous job. Yeah, but but yeah, it, it's it's always fascinating. The companies, and of course, I'm sure someone has told you that Texaco, Exxon, they started here originally. Te- Exxon was standard. Mm-hmm. You know, which, Standard oil company. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, but it was um, the Texas company. I, I as a as a kid, I remember uh, they'd ask, they'd have these uh, little kitty shows, uh, 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 Cowboy John and stuff, and they'd have the little kids sitting there, and they'd ask, uh, "Well, well, Freddie, where is your daddy? He works for the Texas company. That was Texaco. Oh, Texaco. Yeah, or, or the Gulf, you know. Yeah. And, but in, when we were growing up, it was Mobile. Everybody worked at Mobile. Sure. Which is Exxon now. Right. You know? yeah. so, but there was, oh, they, I don't know the numbers now because I'm not. But it'd, it'd be wild to see if they never broke up Standard Oil Company. Oh, God. It would probably be pre- Pledge Allegiance to yeah, Standard yeah, yeah. Oil, right? <laughs> John D. Rockefeller. Yeah, I good. mean, he'd be, on the, he'd be on a couple of bills, right? Goodness <laughs> gracious. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, was, that was amazing. But, um, yeah, um, it, this, it has a rich history. Here's a great area. It's a great area. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm glad I came back. I came back in, like I said, in 94. Yeah, that was one of my goals. for. See, I keep saying 94. I came back in 75. Oh, okay. oh 75. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. one of my goals for starting this podcast was I, I had a, a close circle of friends that had such amazing stories, mm-hmm. and I thought that other people should hear them. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you can go anywhere. I mean, anywhere. But, um, you know, this, this area, uh, uh, you know, has a lot of stories that are not being told, a lot of stories about a lot of companies that have, have started here. Yes, know? I agree. And um, so anyway, but um, yeah, we, we, we've been a blessed company. Yeah. Well, let's wrap this up. It, sure. um, it says in 1999, key management positions were taken over by third generation family members. The current president, Joseph Fertitta, uh-huh. Donald, Donald Fertitta is vice president, mm-hmm. uh, secretary treasurer, and Steve Lyle is regional sales super, or that, am I, is that still? Yeah, we, yeah. we give ourselves titles. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I, I the, Steve, yeah, Steve has uh, the big joke with Steve and I is that you know he wears a different hat every day. Oh, he, yeah, his okay. his uh, let me just tell you where his relation his uh, uh, wife Jorita is a shame that was a Fertita. So her grandfather oh, her yeah. grandfather was Mr. Fertita, and um, Steve's been out there I think about twenty years, and um, he he I guess title wise supposed to be in charge of all the our direct business, you know, all our trouble. But, you know, if, if uh, mechanical things happen, it goes to Steve. If there's time yeah. to be, he even. That's he, the classic business owner. Yeah, there. yeah, you know, I laugh because, and then um, the last few um, sales openings, we had to do some interviews with. I, I didn't want to do them. I wasn't man enough to do I can't <laughs> So yeah. he, uh, Steve took over and he did a great job. So I, I said, oh, you're now head of HR. So anyway, so he has all of it, but uh, anyway, right. so we give him more bottles of free steak season. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it says the, the pride and rich heritage of tradition continues on into the 21st century mm-hmm. with a fresh attitude and renewed commitment to success. To all of our customers, we remain dedicated to this proud heritage of continuing to offer quality products and excellent service. That's us. Well, Toby, thank you so much for coming on today. Well, You're you. welcome back this. anytime. Uh, tell everybody where they can find this uh, delicious goodness. All your grocery stores, Market Basket, H-E-B, Kroger's, yeah. you know. And if you're listening to this from out of town, uh, tell them how to, how to order it. Uh, textjoy, textjoy.com. Yeah, textjoy.com. Yes, and uh, they can. Um, and that's got all the products. It's got everything. It's got Even everything. merchandise. Yes, we have things we can, the little little things we can um, sell. Cups, them, uh, and, cups gi- and gift baskets. And, yeah, the whole yeah. thing. And um, I, I, I'm sorry I didn't bring a gift box. Uh, or, you know, the gift the, boxes are really nice. Yeah, they're they're yeah. even in the shape of Texas. Yes, yes, yes. Those were, uh, it was, a, it was a, a freak little deal. The company that made our boxes came to us one day, and uh, Carlo was still president. And um, he said, I have this Texas box. Is there anything you can do with it? And it, sat, it sat on our desk for a couple of years before so we decided to go ahead and do that and everything. And it's, yeah. That's been a great little gift thing for us, you know. Wow. So, and also these little tri-packs. 
those yeah, things. Yeah, that's good as well. Yeah, we, we have um, twice good music over here. Buys a, a load of them, send all of their customers every year. Yeah, yeah very good. So, good. Yeah, so anyway. All right, well, I've got my bottle of hand sanitizer ready to roll, and and we're going to go back out into the world. There we go. (laughs) All right. Thank Thank you, you. sir. You're welcome.